Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Picture Book Parade, Books from Small Presses. I'm Julia Smith, Senior Editor, Books for Youth at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so that they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides and title list were sent directly to you from Zoom at the start of the webinar, but you can also download them at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive a follow-up email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Ashley Marie Morellis, Sales Manager at Familius, Donna Spurlock, Marketing Director at Charles Bridge, Lizzie Mason, Director of Marketing and Publicity at Page Street Kids, Sophia Espinoza, Senior Manager, Curriculum and Learning Design at Encantos, Carolyn Yoder, Senior Editor at Calkins Creek, an imprint of Boyd's Mills and Kane, and Sandra Neal Wallace, Rich Wallace, and Charlie Palmer, award-winning creators of the Teacher's March, How Selma's Teachers Changed History, publishing this September from Calkins Creek. First, we'll hear from Ashley Marie Morales. Ashley was born and raised in the heart of California's Central Valley, where her time visiting the library blossomed into a career in publishing. She is currently the sales manager for Familius Publishing and the author of several children's books. Welcome, Ashley. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. Um, just really quickly uh, about Familius, if you're not familiar with our publishing house, um, we were founded by Christopher Robbins, um, and we have been around for about six years now. We've been named top five fastest growing independent publishers for the last three years in a row, um, and we have a mission to help families be happy, so all of our books focus on trying to fulfill that mission. Okay, so our first book is going to be Made For Me. Um, Made For Me was written by Zach Bush, um, who is actually a nightclub owner, um, but after the birth of his first child, he felt so moved with emotions that he wrote a poem for the first time in his life, um, and that poem became Made For Me. It was a publisher weekly bestseller. We have it available in hardcover and board book um, coming next season we will have it also available in a paperback. Um, and we do also have animated videos, um, education workshops, and the author is available for events in Miami. And so Made For Me is a great book for fathers. Around this time, Father's Day, we do really well with it. And hopefully this will do well for you guys as well. And so our next book is The Road Not Taken. And so this is an illustrated um, poem. It's an illustrated version of the poem by Robert Frost. And we've received wonderful reviews from Kirkus and the New York Times. Um, it's a beautiful story about how the road you take affects your journey of life. Um, and aligning with our mission, it focuses on your family journey through life. Um, so just a beautiful illustrated version of this classic poem. And our next book is going to be The Little Eye Who Lost His Dot. Um, this was the first book in our Language is Fun series, which was created by Kimberly Gard. It is a fun story that teaches children about why we have capital letters. Um, the little eye goes to school one day and he can't find his dot. All of the little letters help him try to find it. And in the end, his, he realizes that he is becoming a capital letter and now he can start sentences. Um, this author is the winner of Colorado Book Award. 
and she also has coloring pages and worksheets available for story time and other um, classroom style events. And the next book we have is The Day Punctuation Came to Town. So this is the second book in the Language is Fun series. Um, we've received wonderful reviews from Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, and Midwest Book Review about this um, title. It also has coloring pages and worksheets available. Um, and this one is all about punctuation coming into the letter town and explaining all of their uses and the way that you would use punctuation in a sentence. And um, so really fun, kind of a schoolhouse rock style book to teach kids about language. And our next book is At the Stroke of Good Night. Um, this book was created by silhouette artist Clay Rice. Um, he creates these beautiful paper cut imagery and is world renowned for his art. Um, this book shows all the different scenes of really the world going to sleep at the end of the night. It's a beautiful bedtime story, um, but it also really um, highlights this paper cut art style. And um, we've received great reviews from Publishers Weekly and Midwest Book Review um, about both the art and the beautiful poem that goes along with it. Um, this is one of Clay Rice's many books. It is the most recent one, um, and it's just a really beautiful story for children to enjoy. And our next book is Over in the Woodland. So this is one of the books that is launching in July from our spring se season. Um, this book is all about a mythological journey and counting. Um, so it is in the style of through, Over in the Meadow, um, but it features different creatures from mythology, including fairies, ogres, um, the griffins. And throughout each page, you can find a little griffin hidden in each illustration. And we got great reviews from Kirkus. We do have an ARC available, both digital or a physical copy. So if that is something that you guys are interested, feel free and request that. And um, for our next title, we have The Mighty Silent E. So this is going to be the third book in the Language is Fun series. Um, this one releases in September, and it's all about the little silent E who thinks that he's not needed in class until he doesn't show up one day and realizes that um, he definitely is needed for a lot of words. Um, again, Kimberly Guard is really great at creating all of these coloring pages and um, workbook style activity sheets to go along with her books. This will be the final book in the series. Um, and so she has created content to go along with it. We do have an ARC available. If you are interested, feel free to request it after the presentation. And our next book, or we're going on to our fall titles. And um, so these are the ones that are releasing next season. All of these books will have digital PDFs available. And if you guys are interested in requesting a physical art, feel free to email us after the presentation. All right, so next we have Florence and her fantastic family tree. This is a beautiful story of a child who is asked to create a family tree and she realizes that her family is not a traditional family tree. She has several divorces in her family, half brothers and sisters, stepsisters, and she learns to love them while doing this um, project. So if you go on to the next slide, um, you can see that, sorry, <laughs> we've received some great reviews from clinical psychologists um, and other adults that work with children who have um, complicated family backgrounds. And um, it's a really beautiful book that teaches children to love their family no matter how they're made up. Um, so we do have ARCs available. This will be available in September um, for physical copies. So for our next book, we have No Matter What. This is a foster care tale written by Josh Shipp. Um, Josh Shipp is pretty well known for his famous TED talk about how each child is one caring adult away from a success story. Um, so this book is his actual foster care tale um, told through animals. 
And so throughout the story, Josh feels like he doesn't belong in all of these different households and he begins to act out as a, a means of being taken to the next house. He doesn't want to stay with anyone until eventually the kind and gentle elephants are the ones that um, take him in and love him no matter what. And see if you'll go to the next slide. Uh, this book will be released in September. We do have um, digital arcs available. If you guys are interested in receiving this in a physical format, feel free to reach out. We do have a few of those left. And our next book is The Runaway Shirt. And um, so this is a really fun picture book about um, doing laundry, really, and how this mother and child are interacting and having fun while also doing chores. It teaches um, children about playtime and um, active play, which is really fun. And um, if you would go to the next slide. Thanks. Um, so this one is also releasing in September. We do have digital um, arcs available and a few physical copies left if that is something you're interested in. Um, just a really great story about doing um, daily housework. And our next slide. So we have Snooze of Palooza. And um, this one is also written by Kimberly Gard, who is the author of the Language of Fun series we talked about earlier. Um, this is a counting journey through the winter hibernation season. Um, throughout the book, you will see all these different animals start to um, join this den and hibernate the release. Um, and throughout the story, they're also counting to 10. Um, so this one will also be available in fall. We do have digital arcs available as well as physical copies. Um, we could go to the next slide. And so Santa.com is our newest Christmas title. It's all about a modern Christmas story where Santa's workshop became automated. Um, and it is the journey of all of these elves trying to bring Santa's magic back into the workshop. Um, so that they can save Christmas from an evil hacker. Um, it's a really fun modern Christmas tale, and we do also have digital arcs available for this one. And so you can skip ahead. And our last title is Dear Moon, which is a beautiful story about a child working through his grief. Um, in the beginning, we find two friends who are trying to stop the moon from moving. One of their one of the friends is terminally ill, and they think that if they can stop the moon and the days from coming, that it will stop the boy from becoming sicker. In the end, we find that that is not the case, um, but it is a beautiful story that allows parents and teachers um, to help children work through grief and understand that it is okay to feel sad. Um, this is another one we have arcs and both digital and print available for review. So again, if you guys are interested in any of the titles, uh, feel free to reach out to us um, at on Instagram, Twitter, or our PR director, Kate Farrell, her email is here, and then we're happy to send out um, any links or questions you guys may have. Thanks. Thank you, Ashley. Next, we'll hear from Donna Spurlock. Donna is the marketing director at Charles Bridge Publishing. Prior to the publishing life, Donna was a bookseller and buyer at Rizzoli Bookstore in Boston. She has seen firsthand how stories have the power to heal and help facilitate change. And now that summer is here, her favorite reading spot is under the giant pine in her backyard. It drives the squirrels crazy. Take it away, Donna. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm just going to jump in and start with a few titles releasing in late summer. First up is Runaway Pumpkins by Teresa Bateman and illustrated by Stephanie Pfizer Coleman. A class field trip to the pumpkin patch almost ends in disaster in this tale of resourcefulness and resilience. When a bumpy road and a faulty bus storage lock released a load of hand-picked pumpkins back into the wild, this 
They get to work with what they've got and together they decorate the surviving pumpkin for their harvest fair. But good fortune comes knocking when a group of kind neighbors arrive. They found the smashed pumpkins and turned them into a celebratory seasonal fair perfect for sharing. There's yummy soups, cakes, pies, and even french fries. Um, the old adage of when life hands you lemons, make lemonade is reborn with pumpkins, or in this case, pumpkins make pie. Next up is We're Going on a Pumpkin Hunt by Mary Hogan Wilcox and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. This spooky seasonal rewrite of We're Going on a Bear Hunt is just the thing for an atmospheric autumn night. Our brave adventurers set out one night to find the biggest pumpkin in town with one extra nervous friend in tow. Their courage holds in the face of creepy night bugs and countless alarming obstacles, but when they meet one scare too many, it's time to hightail at home. Have the night's antics gone too far? No. Everyone's cackling with laughter. It's a perfect read aloud for the season of ghosts and ghouls. Plus, there's a bonus downloadable kit that includes printable activities for coloring, counting, puzzles, patterns, and discovery fun. Um, okay, I'm very excited about our fall list, starting with Rare and Blue, Finding Nature's Treasures by Constance Van Hoven and illustrated by Alan Marks. Um, discover eight species of plants and animals that are blue in color and are either naturally rare threatened or endangered. Gorgeous illustrations and a playful main text prompt a search for a blue species while the page turn and informative sidebars zoom in to reveal a closer look. Back matter includes more information about the species included, like the Carner blue butterfly, the blue black bear, a blue whale, and more. A glossary and a bibliography are also included and as noted in the back matter by astronaut Karen Nyberg, in the vastness of space sits beautiful blue planet Earth. That's good stewards of our only home. Next up is Hot Pot Night by debut author, illustrator, Vincent Chen. In this sweet story, one Taiwanese American boy's enthusiasm for hot pot brings his diverse neighbors from his urban apartment building together for a night of fun and a delicious communal meal. Together, they cook up a steaming family dinner and celebrate community, cooperation, and culture. It's a natural choice for reading aloud, encouraging little ones to join in the refrain. Hot pot, hot pot. Vibrant, expressive art will draw young readers in and rhythmic text will soon have them chanting along. Back matter includes Vincent's mother's hot pot recipe, which is a traditional dish in China, Japan, and other Asian countries. Next up is Counting Kindness, 10 Ways to Welcome Refugee Children by Hollis Kerman and illustrated by Baru. More than half of the world's refugees are children with millions of kids fleeing wars, floods, and other scary situations in search of a safe place to live. Arriving in a new place is stressful for both the newcomers and their new communities, especially when the newcomers are little ones. But this beautiful counting book captures the joy of finding a home and the power of a welcoming community. From one little boat helping us on our way to two hands lifting us to safety and to 10 new friends making us happy. Counting kindness proves we can lift the heaviest hearts when we come together. Back Matter includes a list of organizations where kids can find out more information about immigration and where which has endorsed this book and Human Rights Watch. Author Hollis Kerman is a founder of the Human Rights Watch Netherlands Committee and is a member of the Save the Children Netherlands Su Supervisory Board. Uh, next up is Night Night Curiosity by Brianna Kaplan Sayers and illustrated by Ryan O'Rourke. A young girl's imagination transforms the comfort of home into the final frontier in this lyrical rhyming story. While mom works the night shift at NASA's control room, dad helps out our intrepid young explorer get ready for bed. Step by step, each part of the bedtime routine transforms into the stages of a Martian mission. A piggyback ride upstairs becomes a blast off sequence. A good night video call to mom becomes a message to mission control from outer space. Ignite dreams of space travel with this bedtime read aloud by best-selling author Brianna Kaplan Sayers, vetted for accuracy by a NASA engineer. 
Uh, next up is Plymouth Rocks, The Stone Cold Truth by Jade. The history of Plymouth Rock is explained by the rock itself. Playful, clever verses offer a comprehensive window into the history of the rock and beyond, dispelling common misconceptions along the way. Alternating with the rock's poems is a witty analysis of the truthfulness of its statements, told in the voice of the fact checker, encouraging young readers to critically engage with history and question whose truths are being told. Rock's poems and claims are analyzed and corrected when necessary, showing that history is not necessarily written in stone. This year we celebrate the 400th anniversary of the landing on Plymouth Rock, or at least near it. Next up is Quill Soup by Alan Durant and illustrated by Dale Blankenauer. It's a captivating retelling of the stone soup story. Noko, the traveling porcupine, arrives in a village. He's denied food and a place to sleep by all the animals he meets. Finally, he's granted a fire and a large pot of water. He adds a few of his quills to make his famous quill soup. But surely everyone contributes ingredients, carrots, beans, and more. Dale Blankenauer draws upon his South African heritage and inspiration from Tanzanian artwork, the wood sculptures of Western Africa, and the costumes and masks of the Boa people of Burkina Faso for the kaleidoscopic artwork rife with bright colors and a tapestry-like sensibility. Next up is No Voice Too Small, 14 Young Americans Making History by Lindsay Metcalf, Keila Dawson, and illustrator Jeanette Bradley. Mari Kopany demanded clean water in Flint, Michigan. Jazz Jennings insisted as a trans girl on playing soccer with the girls team. Viridiana Sanchez Santos protested police profiling by leading a quinceanera at the Capitol. No Voice Too Small celebrates the young people who know how to be the change they seek. 14 poems honor these young activists, featuring poems by Leslie and Newman, Tracy Sorrell, Nikki Grimes, and more. Additional text goes into detail about each youth activist's life and how readers can get involved. Back matter includes information about the types of poetry used, from ballads, elegies, free verse, and more. Short biographies of each of the poets are also included. Next up is Leah and Luis, Who Has More by Anna Crespo and Giovanna Medeiros. This is from our new storytelling math series. Think of math picture books for ages zero to five, what comes to mind. If you're like most adults, you think of books about counting or shapes. The books that come to mind are likely to feature animals or white main characters, rather than reflecting current US demographics in which young children of color predominate. Why don't we tend to think of books that offer a wider range of math topics, feature main characters of color, appeal to a broad audience, and are written by authors of color? Charles Bridge has partnered with the math and science experts at the nonprofit Turk and the Heising Simons Foundation to create just such books. Brazilian author Anna Crespo introduces the concepts of weight and measurement in a story about sibling rivalry and fairness. Young readers will recognize the familiar squabbles of who has more choose their favorite Brazilian snacks, but Luis's big bag of biscuits seems like more than Leah's two croquettes. But when they weigh them, Leah has more. When Leah shares a little bit of croquette with Luis, each has the same amount of delicious snacks to share and enjoy. And next up, also in our storytelling math series, is The Animals Would Not Sleep by Sarah Levine and illustrated by Marta Alvarez McGinnis. It's bedtime and Marco's toys are causing a ruckus and won't settle down. But as a scientist, Marco can't just put his toys away. He needs to sort them. He tries many ways, swimming animals, land animals, flying animals, black and white animals, brown animals, colorful animals, big animals, small animals. Nothing seems to work to help the animals sleep. Marco observes, compares, and groups, but the animals refuse every classification. Finally, he combines math with empathy to get the most important result, maximum snuggles. And finally, there are just two, a few titles on our 2020 list that were bummed. First up is 10 Beautiful Things by Molly Beth Griffin and illustrated by Maribel Lechuga. Lily and her grandmother research um, or search for 10 beautiful things as they take a long car ride to Iowa in Lily's new home with Gran. At first, Lily sees nothing beautiful in the April slush and the cloudy sky. 
but soon she begins to see uh, beauty in unexpected places. Um, 10 Beautiful Things leaves the exact cause of Lily's move ambiguous, making it perfect for anyone helping a child navigate change, whether it be the loss of a parent entering moving. And next up, last up, is Seaside Stroll by Charles Trevino and illustrated by Maribel Lechuga. Explore the beach in winter in this story in which every word begins with the letter S, celebrating the natural silence of an off-season location. Oh, you guys, I'm out of time. Um, thanks for joining us. Please let me know if you have any questions on the next slide. There's my email, my phone. Follow us on our socials. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Donna. Next up is Lizzie Mason. Lizzie is the Director of Marketing and Publicity for Page Street Kids, as well as a YA author, full-time cat mom, and voracious reader. Thanks for joining us today, Lizzie. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so we here at Page Street are an independent publisher based in Salem, Massachusetts, and we're focused on inspiring readers through thoughtful stories with distinctive art. Um, we're editorially driven and diverse publisher, and we're distributed through Macmillan. Um, I also want to mention all of our picture books are available as digital PDFs on Edelweiss, um, or you can email me at my email um, at the last slide for a link. All right, so our first book, I'm gonna go really fast because I have a lot. Uh, Hello Little One is a transformative tale of intergenerational friendship in which a small caterpillar is befriended by a glorious monarch butterfly, and together they learn to see the world through each other's eyes. But it's also an educational overview of a butterfly's life cycle with a gentle discussion of life, death, and rebirth. Um, you can go to the next slide. Perfect is a read aloud as a part of a lesson plan or as a tool to discuss life changes. Um, we've also gotten two starred reviews, and you can see why through this gorgeous art from Fiona Halliday. Next up, we have The Little Blue Cottage from Kelly Jordan. Um, a timeless and universal tale that celebrates the bond created by a little girl and the special seaside cottage she returns to year after year. The story is told through the eyes of the cottage as it waits for her each year for the summer and the girl to arrive. Um, but through sunny days and stormy weather, the cottage and the girl keep each other company and while away long days and nights together until the cottage is left waiting and empty season after season. And when the girl returns at last as a grown woman, their relationship has changed, but a new story begins as she introduces her family to this cherished place. Uh, we also have a wonderful star review for this book. Uh, next up, we have Jonas Hanway's Scurrilous, Scandalous, Shockingly Sensational Umbrella by Josh Prout. This is the true untold story of Jonas Hanway, the man who hated getting rained on so much that he fled London where the only way to avoid the rain was to take a carriage, which isn't always practical or economical. So Jonas traveled the world and returned to popularize something totally scandalous, sensational, and shocking in 1750s London, the umbrella. This is the perfect story of persistence, problem solving, and how good ideas can hold water. And uh, we have a classroom guide available on our website. So I recommend you check that out, in addition to um, a bunch of other really fun activity guides and classroom guides that we have there. Uh, next up, we have Dusk Explorers from Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay Leslie, illustrated by Ellen Rooney. Um, this is an appropriate book after many, many months spent indoors. It's a lyrical ode to the timeless magic of summer evenings spent outside that encourages children to unplug. Join a diverse group of suburban kids as they dash and dodge in classic street games like tag and kick the can and reconnect with nature's simple pleasures, catching frogs, hunting fireflies, and climbing trees. This book will remind kids of the fr fun and friends that wait just outside their doors and will leave adults smiling with nostalgia for their own desk explorations. And this book also has a star review. We have been very, very lucky this season. Um, our next book is Nola's Scribbles Save the Day by Christina Lally. Nola loves her scribbles, but no one seems to understand the imaginative world she's created for herself. Frustrated and uninspired, Nola draws a blank, a big, boring blank. But when Nola literally falls into a creative slump, in which she falls into a hole, she discovers that she's not alone. Lots of people struggle with creativity, and if she can find the courage to share her scribbled ideas again, she may just inspire others to think outside the box and give their ideas a try too. This book shows readers of all ages the power in persevering to create and embrace unique expression, and adults will enjoy how the solution emphasizes the importance of collaboration and sharing your feelings. Next up, 
Lloyd finds his whale song by Skylar Amon. The rhythm of the whale song guides whales through danger and connects them to each other, but poor Lloyd is too quiet to join in. And if he can't sing, how can he be part of the pod? Uh, but one day he finds a magical, mysterious object with supersonic seaweed wings, a seaweed strings, a ukulele. He practices and practices, but before he can perform for them, a disruptive, noisy boat approaches and scatters the pod. So Lloyd's powerful new instrument may be the only thing that can reunite them if he can find the courage to share his song. Uh, this is an inspiring and whimsical tale about finding your voice that encourages children to embrace differences both in themselves and in others, and includes back matter with an introduction to the real life phenomenon of whale vocalization and the dangers of noise pollution, as well as sheet music for Lloyd's ukulele song. So cute. Um, I love Lloyd's little sad face. <laughs> Next up is It's Showtime of Pepper and Franny Story by Catherine Lazar Adele. Um, Franny loves to have an audience, but Pepper prefers to perform when no one is around. So when they decide to stage a performance, Pepper is content to work behind the scenes as Franny prepares an epic, extravagant spectacle. She's just forgetting one thing, to practice her song. When Franny's lack of preparation leaves her stuck in front of the crowd, Pepper knows just how to help by accompanying Franny on the piano from backstage. Uh, this is a heartfelt book that highlights the power of friends celebrating each other's strengths and working together as a team. Our next book is Alien Tomato from Christian Schroeder, Ill illustrated by Meta Engel. Uh, when a mysterious red orb appears in the garden one day, the vegetables decide that it must be an alien tomato who they name Allie and try to make her feel as welcome as possible. But Gopher isn't convinced. He's sure it's just a ball. But is it a ball? Uh, this is a really cute introduction to dramatic irony and it has a big twist. So kids will love being in on the hilarious knowledge that the alien tomato is apparently just a red ball. And then they'll be really as surprised as their parents, but it turns out maybe not to be. Uh, it also teaches readers not to make quick assumptions about newcomers and instead to be patient and open to learning about them. Our next book, The Ninja Club Sleepover by Laura Gale, illustrated by Mackenzie Haley. Willa and her best friends have matching ninja backpacks and ninja t-shirts, and at school they even form a nin ninja club, but Willa has a secret. She's actually a werewolf. And ninjas don't have fur, right? Um, worried that no one will understand, she hides the truth from her friends until Val has a sleepover for her birthday and it's on the night of the full moon. But when an accident reveals that her friends were hiding secrets too, Willa realizes that all of us are weird in our own special ways. Uh, this explores facing your fears and fitting in, encouraging readers to celebrate their true selves. Um, but also Willa's insecurity and first sleepover jitters, I think will really resonate with children who are going through this similar experiences. Next up, this is a sad one, but I think it's an important one. Saturdays are for Stella. Uh, by Candy Wellens, illustrated by Charlie Eve Ryan. George loves Saturdays because that's when he spends time with his grandma Stella. The two of them love going on adventures, but even when they stay in, George and Stella always have fun together. But one day Stella is gone and George wants to just cancel Saturdays altogether. But when a new addition to the family arrives, George finds a way to celebrate the priceless memories he made with his grandma, all while making new ones too. He teaches his new little sister about the things that he's learned with his grandma. So this book thoughtfully addresses death and grief, as well as the excitement of getting to know a new sibling. And this one we've just gotten a star review for as well. Um, the next one, I think you all will appreciate, Fliberty Gibbity Words. This is by Donna Guthrie, illustrated by Aza Galland. Young William Shakespeare discovers that words can be as evasive as they are inspiring, but the best ones are worth the effort to tame into stories. Um, it all starts one, window, one morning when words fly into William's window. He wants to catch them, but they are flibberty gibbity and quick and slip right through his fingers. Soon whole lines of verse are leading him on a wild goose chase as they tumble, dip, flip, and skip all through town past a host of colorful characters that you may find as familiar as the quotes. Um, William remains persistent and with time and the proper tools, he finds a way to keep the words with him. With quotes and sly references to the famous works of William Shakespeare and the words he invented, plus back matter that gives a really simple introduction to Shakespeare and provides a key to the plays that are mentioned, this book blends history with fantasy in a way that will make learning about Shakespeare fun and also has a starred review. Our next book, Amadou Zoo by Rebecca Walsh. Amadou has waited and waited for his class trip to the zoo, but when they arrive, his teacher would rather talk about rules and facts. So Amadou eagerly explores the zoo in his own way by allowing his imagination to lead. 
As more and more classmates follow him into his irresistible world of adventure, the sepia-toned zoo fills with vibrant color, but will Amadou's teacher follow too? Uh, this, ex this is an exploration of childlike wonder and an ode to the patient teachers everywhere. Next up, oh, and this one has a starting view too. Uh, next up, we've got Bess the Barn Stands Strong. This is about hand-built, steady and strong Bess the Barn, who keeps the farm's animals safe and sound through many celebrations and seasons until she starts to sag and creak and slump, and then comes a new farmer and a shiny new barn. Um, but when a storm arrives and the new barn doesn't hold up, Bess is the one who stands strong. Next up is Wear Bone by Kitty Moss, which is Balthazar's bone. It's his favorite toy in the world. And when he wakes up and realizes it's missing, he starts to freak out. Uh, he searches everywhere, but he can't find his bone. Um, he tries to calm himself with creative breaths, uh, med meditative breaths and creative yoga poses, but he just gets more and more worked up. And I think that parents and kids will appreciate the idea of trying to find a way to calm yourself, even when he's not successful. Um, a couple more. The poisoned apple. In this twist on a classic fairy tale, a witch makes a poisoned apple for a princess, but when the kind-hearted princess gives the apple away, the witch watches as her plot spirals out of control and eventually leads to her getting what she deserves. So this is a fairy tale told from the villain's point of view um, with Anne's gorgeous art. Next up, My Hair is Magic. This is the story of beauty and strength about a little girl who loves her hair from the author I'm uh, sorry, from the illustrator of Rise, um, from Paige Bird to poet of the people, Maya Angelou. Um, this little girl knows her hair is great just as it is, even when people ask, why is your hair so big? And she answers, why isn't yours? Um, it's told in bold verse and has beautiful, fantastical illustrations. Um, and I think that everybody is really going to love this book. All right, I have two more. Lottie's paper, Magical Paper Puppets. This is about Lottie Reininger, who created what is considered the first feature-length animated film, the uh, one of the first ones, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. Um, and it's it's illustrated with these striking paper cut illustrations that evoke Lottie's classic silhouette illustrations. Um, and last one, I Am the Wind by Michael Karg, which is a journey with the wind as it travels around the world, encountering different landscapes and interacting with a variety of animals. And I just love this spread. And I will leave it at that because my time is up. Thank you all for bearing with me as I went through these very, very quickly. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Our next panelist will be Sophia Espinoza. Sophia is a, car a career educator, curriculum designer, and technologist whose primary focus has been on creating curriculum, technology, and classroom environments that foster personalized learning. Now at Encanto, Sophia is using her expertise in bilingual education, 21st century learning, and early childhood development to create media and books for children that are as fun as they are educational. The floor is yours, Sophia. Thank you, Julia, and hola, hello to everyone from the Encantos Familia. Uh, you all have been so quick to embrace and share our, our bilingual books since we published the very first one called Los Pollitos, which I am now proud to say is star reviewed and award winning. Uh, and for that, we thank you. Muchas gracias. Now for Action Packed years later, I've got lots to update you on, so let's get started. Um, and just for a quick overview, I'm going to start off with telling you a little bit more about Encantos and then jump into some of our books. Okay, next slide. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. What is Encantos? Encantos creates a range of family entertainment and education brands, all with the goal of reaching a diverse audience of children. Even though people of color make up the majority of the world's population, we still have a huge gap in having multicultural audiences accurately represented in an authentic way. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sure some of you have seen the hashtag, we need diverse books and others that call this out. Families want trusted brands that reflect their values, their culture, their tech savvy lifestyle, and we're here to make that happen. Okay, next slide. All of us at the, in the Encantos Familia believe that 21st century kids need to learn 21st century skills to reach their full potential. Every parent wants their child to learn critical thinking, literacy, and life skills that are necessary to thrive. And we spend our energies publishing books that represent all kids, native Spanish speakers, native English speakers, and families that want to teach their kids another language. After all, we strongly believe, and our motto is, bilingual is better. Okay, next slide. 
Uh, and it looks like the critics agree that Encantos is doing it right. Our media has gotten positive reviews from all these organizations and publications. Next slide. Uh, here are some reviews. I really personally appreciate the Babel recommendation that this belong on the bookshelf of every young reader. Okay, next slide. All right, so a little bit more about um, our accolades. Next slide. Okay, so I'm going to dive into the Canticos brand now. Um, it's your number one bilingual preschool destination. Each title in our Canticos collection combines well-known Latino uh, or Latinx nursery rhymes with play and learning of literacy and math concepts through accordion folded books. So kids see the story in English on one side, you flip the book around and it's in Spanish on the other. Um, all over the world, nursery songs and rhymes have been used to introduce kids to early co childhood concepts and to build those dear cross-generational bonds through commonly known songs. Um, and we're proud to announce, you can see here on this slide, that our nursery rhymes collection will eventually include over 40 titles. And if you can see some of these, maybe some of you that grew up uh, singing these songs will recognize some of the titles. There's Feliz Navidad, All the Colors, which is based on the song De Colores. I'll jump into that book um, because that book is uh, recently just came out. Um, Arroz con Leche, so familiar titles to some of us. Okay, next slide. All right, so fans of the Canticos bilingual sing-along series will love these two new interactive books, Pinpon and All the Colors. In these books, you introduce kids to colors, that's in De Colores, and the Pimpon book introduces them to manners and hygiene, and both are bilingual. Um, so for those of you who know Pimpon, it's a beloved nursery rhyme sung in many Latin American countries, um, and De Colores is a popular folk song, and it's also very well known in Spanish-speaking countries. Um, you might rec recognize De Colores, that's the most famous one. The song goes, De Colores. And it's a really, really beautiful song that we put into a book and I think it's come to life in a really nice way. Okay, next slide. Oop, next slide. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Each book features flaps for kids to lift so they can interact with the books and each is available in two formats. One is a cool, unique magnetic closure with uh, English and Spanish on opposite pages. Um, and the other one is the accordion style book. Plus you can go to our website and listen to the songs and see sing-along videos. So all of these books also have um, videos and songs that go along with them that are a part of our television series that has been featured on Nick Jr. So there are lots of resources on our website for that as well. Okay, next slide. Okay, and we have a new series, The Bilingual First, perfect for parents and teachers and all of you who want to introduce a second language to babies, toddlers. Um, and as a teacher, I've actually also used um, these in the classroom um, to teach children that are as old as kindergarten, first grade. Uh, they're pretty basic concepts with really great vocabulary. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the two that are available right now are letters A to Z and first 100 words. In the former, readers get 26 words in English and Spanish for an easy way to learn the alphabet. And first 100 words has essential bilingual vocabulary. Um, there's another book, Feelings, that's coming in mid-July and that helps kids learn emotions uh, in both languages. And here you'll see we also included a few pages of a book that's not out yet um, that is for early numbers and counting. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here's a little bit more detail on um, the books and the timeline has changed somewhat. So first 100 words and letters A to Z are out now and feelings will be out next month. Okay, next slide. Okay, so for slightly older readers, kids ages five and up, there's the Tiny Traveler's Treasure Quest book series. So kids can explore the world right from their own home. Okay, next slide. The Tiny Travelers books build bridges, cultural understanding, and help kids explore geography, language, culture, and the arts. Okay, next slide. 
Essentially in our books, kids travel to each of the countries that a book is based on, and they learn about the country's currency, language, the capital and major landmarks, vocabulary words, local dishes, and more. Okay, next slide. And each book is developed with a destination expert to ensure cultural authenticity is maintained and depicted accurately. So far in our series, you can travel to India, Mexico, China, and Puerto Rico with the Japan and USA coming soon. Okay, next slide. All right, and I wanted to take a moment to highlight a new resource we created for fun educational activities for each of our brands called the Encantos Learning Hub. We started it a few months ago as a way to support distance learning at home, uh, but once you visit it, you'll see that the materials are perfect for the classroom too. So no matter what our setting is in the fall, I'm sure caretakers, parents, teachers, and librarians will find the activities there engaging and useful. Um, it's been praised by USA Today, Common Sense Media, and the School Library Journal, so please check it out. Uh, the link for that is on our last slide. Okay, next slide. All right, so coming this fall, we're releasing a new book in our Skeletito series featuring a new ca character named Skeletina. This series is all about supporting conversations with kids about fears and coping with challenges such as grief and anxiety. Uh, these topics are relevant now more than ever because of the unexpected challenges we're facing with the pandemic, um, though, you know, the topics are certainly timeless. All right, next slide. Okay, so here at Encantos, it's all about conversations, talking, sharing, and we want to hear from you. Email us to become an Encantos Library Ambassador. You'll see books in development and be a part of our inner circle. Something else that we are also working on right now is launching a new app that has all of our bilingual books and videos and a lot of really great bilingual learning experiences made to, uh, for language enrichment and to support new language acquisition. Um, so I can definitely include more information about that in the last slide and please reach out. The email is here. Um, it doesn't look quite clear right now on the presentation, but it's libraryreviews at encantos.co. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here's to all the kids and families you serve. Thank you, muchísimas gracias from the Encantos Familia. All right, I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Our final panelist today will be Carolyn Yoder, Sandra Neal Wallace, Rich Wallace, and Charlie Palmer. Carolyn Yoder is the senior editor of Culkin's Creek, the American history imprint of Boyd's Mills and Kane, a division of Astra Publishing. She has edited several award-winning titles, such as Cybert medalist Larry Dane Brimner's 12 Days in May and Gail Jaro's Cybert honor title Spooked. Sandra Neal Wallace and Rich Wallace are award-winning writers of nonfiction titles, including First Generation, 36 Trailblazing Immigrants and Refugees Who Made America Great, and Blood Brother, Jonathan Daniels and His Sacrifice for Civil Rights, which won the International Literacy Association's Social Justice Award and a Yalsa Award nomination for Excellence in Nonfiction. Sandra's picture book biography, Between the Lines, How Ernie Barnes Went from the Football Field to the Art Gallery, is the NCTE 2019 Orbis Pictus winner of Outstanding Nonfiction. And last but not least, Charlie Palmer is an award-winning graphic designer and illustrator. He also teaches design, illustration, and painting, most recently at Spelman College. His two recent picture books are there's a Dragon in My Closet and Mama Africa, which won the 2018 Coretta Scott King John Steptoe New Talent Award. Take it away, Carolyn. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to the Fall 2020 Picture Books by Calkins Creek, the U.S. history imprint of Boyd's Mills and Kane. These titles are devoted to remarkable individuals. We start off with Smelly Kelly and his Super Senses, by Beth Anderson and illustrated by Jen Harney. It highlights the story of Smelly Kelly, an Irish immigrant whose nose and inventions helped save the New York City subway almost 100 years ago. This is historical fiction, but Smelly Kelly is all real. 
the efficient, inve efficient, inventive, and often annoying Melville Dewey by Alexis O'Neill and illustrated by Ed Fotheringham uncovers the complex, complicated, and indeed annoying Melville Dewey, the man behind the Dewey Decimal System. Both are perfect steam titles. Next slide. In Farmers Unite by Lindsay Metcalf, she follows in words and amazing photos the tractor parade that entered Washington, D.C. in the late 1970s. Thousands of farmers descended on the Capitol to protest unfair prices. At first, the farmers were not welcome, but that changed when snow, as seen on the cover, fell and the tractors dug out the city. Emma Bland Smith and artist Allison Jay in The Pig War cleverly show how the death of a pig ignited a feud between a British farmer and an American one in the Pacific Northwest, and instead of leading to war, led to peaceful negotiations in 1859. And finally, next slide, in The Teacher's March by Sandra Neal Wallace and Rich Wallace and illustrated by Charlie Palmer, readers meet the heroic efforts of Reverend Reese and the teachers of Selma who fought for voting rights. Book List in its starred review says, quote, this stunningly powerful book by a team of award-winning creators should be part of every classroom library and teacher preparation program, unquote. We are fortunate today to have that team here. I start with the amazing Charlie Palmer. Charlie, over to you. Hello, this is Charlie. Can you hear me? Everyone, can you hear me? Can, yes, Charlie. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. All right, I had to come outside the uh, studio in order to speak because I wasn't picking up inside. Um, let me say that this has been a pleasure. Um, fortunately, because my journey has always been about the African-American struggle and triumphant stories and heroes and unsung heroes, to read the manuscript was something that immediately inspired me and I knew I wanted to be a part of this. I wanted to thank you all for selecting me as the artist, but I, I swear to you, it was very much a journey of love. It was the journey of discovery. It was about finding something, and I know there are so many stories out there like this, but finding a story that I was not aware of. And then being able to look at some of these photographs and be even further inspired by seeing these images to bring it to life. I, I hope that I've done it justice, but I, I assure you that the journey itself has been a pleasure. Well, Charlie, like you, this is a story we weren't familiar with at all. Um, we learned about it when we were researching Blood Brother, our, our uh, biography of Jonathan Daniels. We were actually sitting in Brown Chapel in Selma with Joyce Parrish O'Neill, who's a historian at the, at the chapel. And she was telling us about Bloody Sunday and those events. And then she mentioned that as a, when she was a teenager, her mother had taken part in the, the Teacher's March in Selma. Her mother had taught eighth grade uh, social studies in, in Selma. And Reverend Reese organized this march of 105 black teachers to go from school after school one day to the courthouse to demand their right to vote. And this was a couple of months before Bloody Sunday. It was before the march from Selma to Montgomery. It was a very important step along the way toward those events that we all know about from history and civil rights um, lore but it was a step that had kind of been overlooked because of those major events that took place just a few weeks later. Charlie, I want to thank you, first of all, for making this story soar with your acrylic paintings. Every illustration is a painting, yet you were able to ground the readers in the story and in the moment, which is what we really wanted to do with uh, the manuscript. It's incredible that the Teachers' March is a turning point in civil rights and voting rights history, and yet it's virtually unknown. And when we heard of the story sitting in Brown Chapel by, told by Mrs. Joyce Parrish O'Neill, and we met Reverend Reese, who 
led this march, we realized immediately not only the magnitude of this event, but the urgency to tell it through the history makers themselves, who were still alive, but in their 70s and 80s, several years ago. And before we even knew that this was going to be a book with um, Calkins Creek, we interviewed Reverend Reese and Coach Huggins and Joyce Parrish O'Neill to get as much of their memory of the Teachers' March as possible. And in fact, we were the last journalists to interview Reverend Reese about the Teachers' March before he died in April of 2018. So in um, interviewing these folks, Reverend Reese and, and Joyce Parrish O'Neill, we learned about the facts of, the, of this Teachers' March, but mostly the real key, what we got was the human emotional details, what it was actually like to participate. I remember Joyce Parrish O'Neill telling us about the morning of the march. She's a young teenager heading off to school, knowing that she may not see her mother that night because her mom was going to participate in this march. She may lose her job. She may be jailed or worse. And Mrs. Parrish was the sole provider for Joyce and her sister and also for their grandmother. She was the breadwinner, as they say, and she was risking her livelihood. And hearing about how proud Joyce was at that moment, but also how very afraid she was, really gave us that, those, those details that we needed to, to bring the people in this story to life. Uh, I think just... one of the things, uh, I'm, or just uh, excuse me for a second, one of the things that really also moves me in doing my own research was to find photographs of Reverend Reese marching alongside with Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King. I mean, to actually, and I've seen these photographs before, and there he was. It, he was standing in front. He wasn't in the back of the crowd, but to see Reverend Reese up front with, you know, with Coretta Scott King and Dr. King was pretty amazing. It's like, it, it was like putting a, a, a name to a face. And that was also very exciting to me when it came to creating it. Well, you know, Reverend Reese has been misidentified or unidentified in, in all those photographs, as you know, Charlie. Um, we saw a couple of um, illustrations past there, your um, illustration of Dr. King, who visited Brown Chapel after the triumphant Teachers' March to congratulate the teachers. And he said that the Teachers' March was the first time such a well-organized, dramatic protest has been made by a group of Black professionals. And it's interesting that while Dr. King is involved in this story, he's not the engineer of it. It's the teachers who are empowered and making a difference with their actions. And they're the ones that inspire the students to protest. And they inspired other professional groups to protest and to get the Voting Rights Act passed in 1965. So Dr. King was able to grab on to what the teachers accomplished and take it further. And I think it's really important, and Charlie, you do that with your illustrations, to contextualize the civil rights movement and to illuminate those moments that led up to Dr. King's triumphs. You know, Reverend Reese had been organizing marches in Selma for quite a while before this, but this was the one that really solidified the, the movement because, um, because, as Sandra said, it was the first organized group of black professionals. We talk about that a lot in the book, um, how, how he brought them together and convinced them that, you know, we've been marching for quite some time. We're all, we've been getting arrested. We've been getting beaten by the, by the police. But let's take this group and show what we stand for. Professionals demanding our rights together is the thing that Reverend Reese was convinced was going to turn that movement around. And in fact, it did. It, it's the thing that got King's attention as well. Charlie, I wanted to ask you with the, the visuals and was there, there anything in the text that you read that made you say that that's where you're going to start with the book and, and create this masterpiece? I'm not sure if you can hear us, Charlie. Did we lose Charlie there? If we're waiting for him to reconnect, I wanted to mention, you know, um, voting, rights, voting rights marches in Selma were actually prohibited by a court order at the time. So they weren't only just risking their jobs, they were literally breaking the law to do this. 
And many of these same people did wind up in jail afterwards, not after this march, but, but for other, other events. I will have to say that my favorite illustration is the cover of the book because it really sets the scene and places Reverend Reese in the heart of the movement at the Civil Rights Movement Church, Brown Chapel. And we know about Congressman John Lewis, we know about Dr. King, but we also need to know about Reverend Reese and the 104 teachers who marched for voting rights. We really appreciate you letting us share the story today. Yeah, are we, I think we're out of time. I didn't see the a message, but uh, yes, we are, thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Carol and Sandra, Rich and Charlie. And a huge thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to check out booklistonline.com webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. Did you know that Booklist content is freely available to all until further notice? Start reading with our digital edition, a format that pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com. If you're interested in subscribing, take advantage of this special webinar offer to get print, online, digital, and archive access to Booklist for only $99. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. And one more thank you to our sponsors, Familius, Charles Bridge, Page Street Kids, Encantos, and Boyd's Mills and Kane. This concludes today's webinar.